The US Air Force's primary offensive strike unmanned aerial vehicle is the MQ-9 Reaper. Its long loiter time, wide-range sensors, multi-mode communications suite, and precision missiles offer a one-of-a-kind capability for the strike, coordination, and reconnaissance against high-value, fleeting, and time-sensitive targets. In this video, you'll learn how MQ-9 Reaper drones carry out airstrikes on enemies. Let's jump into the video. The MQ-9 Reaper was developed by General Atomics Aeronautical Systems, a General Atomics military contractor and subsidiary that designs and manufactures unmanned aerial vehicles and radar systems for US military and commercial purposes worldwide. What's mind-blowing is how extensive the intelligence capability is, as well as the surveillance, scouting, search and rescue capability. It doesn't stop there. The Reaper has unbelievable precision strike accuracy coupled with buddy laser, convoy, raid overwatch, and terminal air guidance. The M stands for multi-role, and the Q stands for a remotely piloted aircraft system. The number 9 denotes the ninth in a series of remotely piloted aircraft systems. The Reaper is part of a system of remotely piloted aircraft. A fully functioning system includes multiple sensors, weapon-equipped aircraft, a ground control station, the Predator primary satellite link, spare equipment, and operations and maintenance people for deployed 24-hour missions. The MQ-9 Reaper, also known as the Predator B, is a proof-of-concept aircraft that first flew on February 2, 2001. Abraham Karem created the Predator. The Predator B was powered by a 950-shaft horsepower Allied Signal Garrett turboprop engine. Its airframe was based on the normal Predator airframe but had a larger fuselage, and wings stretched from 48 to 66 feet. It could travel at 250 miles per hour and carry a cargo of 750 pounds to an altitude of 50,000 feet for 30 hours. The USAF secured a deal in October 2001 for an initial pair of Predator B for evaluation. They were designated as YMQ-9s due to their prototype role and were delivered in 2002. Until it was dubbed Reaper, the USAF referred to it as Predator B. The USAF hoped that the Predator B would provide improved deadly persistence, flying over a combat area night and day waiting for a target to present itself, complementing piloted attack aircraft which are typically used to drop larger quantities of ordnance on a target. In contrast, a cheaper RPV can operate almost continuously using ground controllers working in shifts, but carrying less ordnance. Here are the critical facts you need to know about how the Reaper is operated. MQ-9 Reaper pilots and sensor operators stationed at bases can use several sensors, including a thermographic camera to hunt for targets and observe the terrain. According to one claim, the inbuilt camera can read a license plate from two miles away. A satellite link takes 1.2 seconds to transmit an operator's command to the drone. Six storage pylons are installed aboard the MQ-9. The inner store pylons can carry up to 1,500 pounds each and can transport external gasoline tanks. The mid-wing store's pylons can hold up to 600 pounds apiece, while the outside store's pylons can hold 200 pounds each. An MQ-9 with two 1,000-pound external fuel tanks and 1,000 pounds of ammunition has a 42-hour endurance. When fully equipped with ordnance, the Reaper has a 14-hour endurance. The GBU-12 Paveway 2 laser-guided bomb, AGM-114 Hellfire 2 air-to-ground missiles, AIM-9 Sidewinder, and GBU-38 Joint Direct Attack Munition are among the weaponry carried by the MQ-9. Gorgon Stair, a wide area surveillance sensor system, was tested on the Reaper. Increment 1 of the system was deployed aboard the Reaper in March 2011 and could cover an area of 6.2 square miles. Increment 2, which included Argus, IS, and expanded the coverage area to 39 square miles, gained its first operational capability in early 2014. The system consists of 368 cameras, each capable of collecting 5 million pixels to generate an image of approximately 1.8 billion pixels. Video is captured at 12 frames per second, yielding many terabytes of data per minute. General Atomics introduced a revised trailing arm design for the Reaper's main landing gear in January 2012. Benefits include a 30% increase in landing weight capacity, a 12% increase in gross takeoff weight, 
from £10,500 to £11,700, a maintenance-free shock absorber, no nitrogen pressurization required, a fully rejected takeoff brake system which provides for automatic takeoff and landing. The magnitude of this capability is unreal. The aircraft also has a high-definition camera in place of the sensor ball, improved communications so ground controllers can see the higher quality video, software to enable automatic threat detection. What is stunning is that they tracked 12 moving targets at once and had the ability to super ripple fire missiles within 0.32 seconds of each other. The remotely piloted aircraft can be disassembled and put into a single container for global deployment and the entire system is transportable aboard a C-130 Hercules or larger aircraft. The MQ-9 aircraft flies from regular US airfields with unobstructed line of sight to the ground data terminal antenna, which provides takeoff and landing communications. The PPSL allows airplanes and sensors to communicate over the horizon. The primary operational concept, remote split operations, employs a launch and recovery ground control station for takeoff and landing operations at the forward operating location. At the same time, the crew was in the US executing this operation remotely via beyond line of sight links. Remote split operations need fewer personnel to be sent to a forward area, concentrate control of the many flights in one location, and simplify command and control functions and logistical supply issues for the weapon system. Apart from USAF, countries like the UK, France, Netherlands, Italy, India, Germany, Belgium, Spain, UAE, Taiwan, and Japan are the active users of the MQ-9 Reaper. Let's see some operational history of the MQ-9 Reaper used by the USAF. The USAF's 432nd wing was activated on the 1st of May 2007 to operate MQ-9 Reaper and MQ-1 Predator UAVs at Creech Air Force Base, Nevada. In 2007, the pilots flew their first combat flights in Iraq and Afghanistan. On October 28, 2007, the Air Force Times announced that an MQ-9 had scored its first kill, successfully launching a Hellfire missile against the Afghan Taliban in the rugged Oruzgan province's Derahud district. The USAF began conducting Reaper operations within Iraq from Balad Air Base on July 17, 2008. On August 11, 2008, it was stated that the 174th Fighter Wing would be exclusively made up of Reapers. The USAF had 28 operational Reapers by March 2009. Positive control of an MQ-9 was lost during a combat mission over Afghanistan on September 13, 2009, and the controlless drone began flying towards the Afghan border with Tajikistan. An F-15E Strike Eagle launched an AIM-9 missile at the drone, damaging its power plant. Before the drone hit the ground, contact was regained, and it was flown into a mountain to be destroyed. It was the first time Allied forces deliberately destroyed a US drone. The Air Force announced on September 18, 2018, that an MQ-9 armed with an air-to-air -air missile successfully shot down a smaller target drone in November 2017. The 432nd Wing was in charge of the drone. While defeating a target drone is a common Air Force exercise, this was the first time a Reaper destroyed a small, maneuvering aerial target. Qasem Soleimani, an Iranian Major General, was killed by a drone strike at Baghdad International Airport on January 3, 2020. Soleimani was murdered by a drone while visiting Iraqi Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi in Baghdad. Soleimani was the commander of the Quds Force, one of five branches of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, and was regarded as the country's second most powerful figure. The US Air Force's MQ-9 Reaper drone and other military aircraft hovered above the area as Soleimani and other pro-Iranian paramilitary figures, including Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis, leader of Iraq's popular mobilization forces, boarded a Toyota Avalon and a Hyundai Star X and drove away from the airport towards downtown Baghdad. The Reaper drone launched several missiles at 12.47 a.m., striking the convoy on an access road near an airport. This strike engulfed the two cars, which caused them to burst into flames and killed 10 individuals. As soon as the news leaked, the U.S. Department of Defense issued a statement saying that the strike was taken out at the president's order and was intended to discourage future assaults. 
Trump noted that Soleimani had planned additional strikes on American diplomats and military personnel and had given his approval to the attack on the American embassy in Baghdad. In recent days, he was planning new attacks on American targets, but we stopped him. Well, that's all we have for today. I hope you understand the air striking capability of the MQ-9 Reaper. If you want more such videos, let us know in the comment section. We'll see you soon.